Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. I am feeling a little bit better, which is good. I'm recovering from a slight cold, so if you um, hear a slight different tone in my voice, that's why. Um, I did a live stream yesterday on the breakdown of the Magic Keys. You should go check that out also, although I sound very terrible, um, as always, because uh, or I sound very terrible because I was really congested, but I was like, I feel a little bit better today in terms of congested congestionness. So I wanted to make this video. This uh, news dropped yesterday, um, of course, but because of the situation, I wanted to, I made the video. I wanted to make it today, so we're gonna go over the itinerary and itinerary and the pricing for the Star Wars Galactic Star, Star Cruiser. At Disney World opening in spring 2022. Alright, so here are your options. Keep in mind, this is a starting from, starting from. So these are the lowest amounts per these things. And they get higher. Keep in mind, it says these are for four-ish partial dates, most weeknights. Keep in mind, weeknights, meaning they could be higher on weekends from August 20th, 2022 to September 17th, 2022. I know it says it's going to open spring 2022, so I don't know if these are the first dates or they just kind of randomly selected some summer dates for you. But these are, um, this this is um, for August 20th. That may be the first booking weekend or first booking week or not. We have two guests in a standard cabin. These are just all standard cabins. So the smallest version, uh, smallest version. Sorry. Uh, so these are still expensive for the smallest version, but keep in mind any sweets or anything will be more expensive than this. Two guests is $1,209 per guest per night or $4,809 um, for the voyage. Total, it's a two night total stay, minimum and maximum. You can't go higher or lower. I mean, you'll see why in the itinerary. Three guests per game is $889 per night. Or $5,299 for voyage total. And four guests per cabin is $749 per person, or about $6,000 for the voyage total. Per person wise, the four guests per cabin cabin receives the most efficient value. This this is the same, uh, the cabin, the standard cabin is the same size. It has four beds, two bunk beds, but the bunk beds can also sleep adults, not just children, so that's good. So, well, there are two guests or four guests, you can get the same amount of space. So for cost efficiency, I suggest you know, getting a group of four, getting a family of four together, um, and paying that $749 per night instead of $1,209 per night if it's just two guests. And it looks like if you're a single person, it, that won't work. Um, it has to be at least two guests um, in your cabin, which I guess... Could be possible. I mean, it's probably most likely. I'm trying to think of situations where people would go by themselves, and I think maybe just media or press or maybe like a vlogger or something, but it's easy to get a couple of vlogger friends together, YouTube friends together, and go and, and stay together. And maybe for media or press, they'll allow one person just to show off the room and stuff. So, yeah. What do you guys think of these prices? These are kind of what I expected. It's like a cruise on land. It is higher. Um, it's more expensive than Disney Cruises, though, but you gotta make... Uh, this is why there's only 100 cabins versus, like, a 1,000-something cabins on a Disney Cruise Ship. Also, Disney Cruise Ships are... Their stays are longer. Like, seven days, four nights. This is only two days. So, it's, and 100 cabins, so they're really trying to, you know... Squeeze that demand out of the Squeeze the pricing out of you because uh, they have so few cabins. Um, so yeah, which ones will you be getting if you decide if you really want to go to this? And how uh, many guests per cabin? And this is just standard cabin. They don't have any prices for the other stuff for the suites or anything. Um, but obviously those will probably be near ten thousand dollars, I assume, for like four guests. Now let's go to the, uh, oh, by the way, let's, uh, oh, so this is, so that's the standard cabin. Here are all the options for you. This is the standard cabin, as you see, that sleeps four people, 
two and two. Apparently, it says it four and five passengers, queen bed, two bunk beds for one adult each, and a wall pull down bed for one adult. If sleeping five. So I wonder if you bring five people. Is that possible? I guess it is possible. And this price will just go down. Is it the same six thousand dollars? And this price just goes down per person? I don't know. But yeah, as you see, sleeps for five passengers. They're adults, even though they look like for the kids. There must be more room than they're showing here. Because it's for adults as well. They also say this bed in this queen bed sleeps up, sleeps up to three adults. Um, as you're quite comfortable being around each other, that might be get a little tight. But they also have a pull-out table and TV with entertainment from your home planet, such as Earth, and a window view out to space. Which, thank goodness, these things have windows because I'm claustrophobic. So uh, I was quite claustrophobic in my cruise ship that I went to, but it was alright. But it's just better if you have a window. I also have a mini refrigerator, a hair dryer, an in-cabin safe, and a phone with a voice small messaging. An interactive TV and an H2O Plus spa bath and shower products. Lots of great things from Earth made it up here in that halcyon. Then there's the Gal Galaxy Class Suite. This is a one bedroom Galaxy Class Suite featuring living space complete with integrated seating area and have all the comforts of standard cabins plus a double vanity bathroom, a bar area from all take all the stress off from the daily activities of finding the first order. And two windows with these out into space and a few extra Star Wars surprises. This sleeps only four passengers, queen bed, and two wall pull down beds for one adult each. And no pricing has been announced for this. And there's the same amenities as the standard cabin. And the grand captain suite, if you really want to be fancy, you have a nice big family. This one has, sleeps eight passengers. This might be like 20 grand. It's supposed to be like 20 grand and 8 divided by 8. So, what, like, grand a person? No. Let's see. Twenty divided by 8. A two and a half grand per person. I feel like that wouldn't be too bad for a grand captain this week. Um, and have ample room for the whole family, featuring posh living space with an integrated seating area. Have all the comforts of, sta of standard cabins, plus the main suite with a double vanity bathroom, a second bathroom with a single vanity, a bar air, three windows with views and space, and a few extra Star Wars surprises. I don't know if that is, but we'll find out when it opens. Eight passengers, two queens, two bunk beds from one adult, and two wall down pull down beds as well. And all the regular cabins. Um, now. Let's check out the itinerary for the uh, the trip. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, they gave an example. They gave an example of the itinerary. Let me just find it on this, this kind of website with a lot of stuff to do. Um, let's check out and start planning. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I really don't. I wish they would have like a. Oh, there's view of my itinerary right in front of my face. All right, so here's what a safe white itinerary might look like. Day one, you arrive around, let's say, 1 p.m. You have a launch pod to the Star Cruiser. It's 15 minutes with that immersive standing simulator experience. You have a little orientation, some light refreshments, some, some sabak lessons. Then you're 
doing must or whatever that is. Then you have captain's reception, which is like a dinner. Like a, um, it's like basically from 4.30 to 7 is like a big dinner. The actual dinner takes place at 5.30 and it has live music, which is cool. And then they have the Adam Regalia, which I feel like it's like a little party or something. But it's only 15 minutes, so I'm not really sure. Then, all of a sudden, there, uh, there's an, uh, what should we call it, uh, unexpected story moment happening. For example, you can either, you can choose your, you can either choose you have little wristband, and you can choose whether you're part of the, uh, light side or the dark side. And, um, so if you're part of the light side, um, you can approve, you can hide a so way to help those decisions, or if you're part of the dark side, you might prove your metal, or if, like a bounty hunter, you'll prove your metal to join an elite smuggling ring. Um, and that's for a half hour. Then you have some bridge training from 8 to 8.45, then special atrium entertainment to 8.45 p.m. Then after that, you can go back to your rooms and chill in the, there's lounges and bars areas, and you can do all that until you decide to go to sleep. Then, the next day, there's breakfast from 7 to 8 a.m. Then, at 8.15, you'll be going to Batu, writing Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance. Then, again, you have a nice story moment where you can broker a deal for a heist or arrange it to show a ship from First Order. Then, you write Smuggler's Run. Then, you have lunch with docking base, seven food and cargo. Then, you can have transport shuttle to... Star Cruiser. Now, on these days, I wonder if like Hollywood Studios will open at 10 a.m. or if, if Hollywood Studios opens earlier. I wonder if Galaxy's Edge won't open until like the this crew leaves. Like, I wonder if the guests of uh, the Star Wars Hotel will get the land to themselves, and then, like for example, a transport shuttle Star Cruiser. Is at twelve forty, so I wonder, like maybe at one p.m., will it open to the general public, or will it just be open to the general public? And they do have like a, a kind of work like a VIP tour where you'll just follow your guide to on rise of the resistance and smugglers run and Doctor Bane Seven. They'll just kind of block out some tables for you. That's probably how it will work. But that'd be very interesting how it'll work in with the mix and guests when you have your trip to about two. Then you have some lightsaber training. Then a droid racing competition, which sounds really fun. Um, that I'm, I'd be really excited for that. The droid racing competition, especially if you could, if it's like, um, if you can build your own droids and race them. I wonder if that. I wonder if they'll have pre-made droids for you, or we could, when you're in part two, take a trip to the droid depot and build your own droid, and then bring it back to race. That'd be pretty cool if you can do that. That'd be really, that'd be really awesome. By the way, you can build a model ship, which is awesome. I love building, I love like buildings and everything. So it's really awesome. Then back with the Sabak, you have a Sabak tournament. Use that special Sabak training you did the day before, and put it in tournament style. Then you can have cocktails at the Sublight Lounge. If you're an adult, if you're a kid, I don't know what you do during that time. Then there's a taster on the Galaxy Dinner for an hour and a half. Then after that. You can put your heist plan that you're doing into action, or you can bring the stolen ship that you stole aboard, and you can watch out for that first order. Then there's me a spectacular, spectacular finale with, with I'm sure, some virtual fireworks somewhere from 10 to 11 that night. Then on day three, you're going to have breakfast, and then you're going to leave. And like, by 10 a.m., 9.30 to 10, you're leaving. And yeah, that is that. That is... The major, major portions of the your experience at the Star Wars Hotel seems pretty cool. There's a lot to do for the thousand you're paying per person. There's a lot to do. I must admit, it's only two nights, but I mean, I think it'll be fun. If I had the money, I certainly would definitely try it. But are you gonna try it? Let me know in the comments below. Is it worth it to you? Um, do you? If it is, what is your favorite activity? And are you going to be one of the first people to book it when it opens next year? Let me know in the comments below. 
Subscribe for more theme park updates. Hopefully, I'll get over this cold and I can be back at the parks on this weekend. So, look for construction updates from Universal Six Flags. Hopefully, cross my fingers. As always, have a fantastic day.